That Dragon Cancer is one of the most heart-wrenching games I've ever played. Ryan and Amy Green made the game with a small team after their son Joel lost his fight with cancer at age 5. While this makes it powerful, it also makes it rife with controversy, and the developers have found themselves on the receiving end of not only praise, but some incredibly harsh criticism. I was expecting something similar to the in-depth discussions you'd find on the pages for To the Moon and Actual Sunlight, but instead I found a lot of hatred and abuse. The complaints are all over the place, but they hover around three main points. 1. That Dragon Cancer is just another walking simulator, not a game. 2. The parents being devout Christians ruins an otherwise great story. And 3. The developers are disgusting for profiting off of the death of their son. I knew that I wanted to make a video about That Dragon Cancer right after playing it, but I didn't know what to say. I could talk about what it does for the future of narrative-driven games, I could talk about religion in games, I could talk about the extreme circumstance of making a game about your own personal tragedies, or I could talk about all of these in response to the controversy surrounding the game. I, uh, I, I, did, the, I did the last one. Over the last few years, we've seen scores of indie games like Gone Home and Dear Esther, first-person, narrative-driven experiences that gamers have not so affectionately dubbed walking simulators. You move along more or less on rails, and you get told a story. While some of these games are met with critical and commercial success, there's a large contingency of gamers who decry the focus on story over gameplay, saying these experiences are more fit for film than game. While these arguments can be hostile and childish, they're not entirely false. When you're telling a story, it's important to think about the medium that you're telling it in. For example, some stories are better fit for a long-form television series than a single feature-length film. Then there are books, plays, rock operas, video games. There are so many mediums through which to tell a story, all of them with their strengths and unique features. If you have a great story, it can be held back by the wrong medium. That's one reason why so many book-to-film adaptations go wrong. It's also why I'm looking forward to the film adaptation of Ready Player One. It was an interesting idea for a story, but I felt like it didn't really belong as a novel. It seemed more like a narrative for a visual medium. That Dragon Cancer is a video game. Should it have been a video game? I think so. I've played a number of narrative-driven games, and That Dragon uses video game convention to a greater extent than any I can think of, except for maybe the Stanley Parable. For example, in Gone Home, you're walking around a house alone, picking up and looking at objects, and trying to figure out where everybody went. It's definitely immersive, with the sound design and lighting keeping things tense as you trigger bits of voiceover. However, I didn't find it very meaningful. I felt like a passive observer, and I was reminded of a book I had read years ago called 13 Reasons Why. It was an okay book, but more importantly, it had a somewhat similar storytelling method to Gone Home. The main character is at the point of the story, and passively discovers the story over time as he listens to audio tapes. Gone Home could have easily been converted into a book in this fashion, and I'm not sure a lot would be lost from the narrative. It didn't do much to actively engage the player. That Dragon Cancer, on the other hand, did things that only a game could do. What the Greens did that I found incredibly innovative was drop you into moments in time throughout their lives and let you live in them. There's a moment in the hospital as Ryan where all I had to do was go answer my phone and hear the voicemail from Amy, but there was no rush. The walls are covered in paintings and pictures, each representing a family who had been affected by cancer, and I could take as long as I wanted taking it in. While the game's written narrative may not have been moving forward, there was a second narrative, a personal one between me and the game. When you see the cutscenes, it's easy to say that Dragon Cancer could have been a film. After all, it's not like the Stanley Parable, where you can make different choices that change the story and make a commentary on choice and gaming that you can't really tell in other mediums. But it was the way that I was allowed to breathe in those cutscenes, and between the cutscenes, that set that dragon apart from Gone Home, To the Moon, and virtually any other narrative game I played. Allowing me to stay in these moments for as long as I wanted or needed, playing with Joel or reading cards or simply thinking, hit on exactly what games can do narratively that no other medium can. Form a relationship with the player. You can't jump inside a film and walk around the scene like an art gallery. You can't prod a character and get a response. Games are the only two-way medium out there, and at the end of the game, when the only thing left to do was leave Joel to his pancake party in the afterlife, I choked up and I stayed there for minutes, blowing bubbles because I just didn't want to leave. There was a genuine emotional obstacle for me to overcome before I could move forward, something that I'd seen before in Metal Gear Solid 3 and Undertale, but more realized. Films, books, they can't do this. They have their story and you receive it, but games allow you to form a relationship with the narrative, and That Dragon Cancer accomplishes this on an unprecedented level. 
Instead of letting me cry over the grief characters feel on the screen, it takes me through my own grieving process. It is, through and through, a video game. I'm pleading for God to spare his life. And I'm tempted to despair because self-inspection leads me to conclude I shouldn't expect much of anything. And yet my wife is expecting a surprise party from the Lord, replete with presents and supernatural miracles. When developing the game, Ryan Green did everything he could to directly translate his and Amy's experience. Their fights, their triumphs, and their beliefs. This has led to some interesting criticism, namely that an otherwise compelling story became unrelatable once they started talking about their relationship to God. But instead of fighting the brief thoughts of mourning, choosing to fight instead that lie that says that those thoughts betray some doubt, some mistrust of God, when I know that those thoughts make me human, and that God knows I am human. Is it really impossible to relate to characters who share different beliefs than you? Now, while I'm Christian, one of my favorite entertainers is Tim Minchin, a very outspoken atheist. He's not the only atheist or agnostic I enjoy, but out of all the entertainers out there, he's one of those that I feel most connected and similar to emotionally. There are also numerous characters in film and video games who either have no professed faith or identify as atheist or agnostic, and I have yet to lose interest in a game because the characters don't make all the same choices that I would make. What draws me to Tim and the Greens is their humanity. Not that I share or don't share their beliefs. This game isn't about Christianity, it's about suffering, which is something literally everybody has to deal with. It's one of the most human things there is, and if the player can't relate to it because it's told from the perspective of somebody who believes in God, I think that has more to do with the player than the developer. After all, how many video games take place in fantasy worlds with religions closely resembling both pantheons and monotheistic religions in the real world? It only seems to be in the context of real people having real faith that this conversation comes around. As I said earlier, this game isn't about religion. It doesn't preach to you that Christianity is the only way, and it doesn't say that everything's okay in the end because of Jesus. And there were some intensely uncomfortable confrontations between Joel and Amy, where you see different ideas of faith at war. How can you sit there like that? Despair doesn't help anything. <sighs> Neither does false hope, and I'm not despairing. We draw a lot of weird, arbitrary lines between us and other people to create an us-them dichotomy and a sense of safety. You see it with political parties, with neighboring countries, and with dozens of other things, including religion. Just as there are bigoted, intolerant Christians, there are also intolerant atheists who are more concerned with feeling intellectually or morally superior to believers than they are with listening to them. When I was in college, there was a girl in my class who demanded that everybody boycott Forever 21 because they printed the words John 316 on the bottom of their shopping bags, despite her not having seen those words until months after she was shopping there. This whole situation kind of made me think about that. This brings us to the trickiest question. Is this game immoral or unethical? There's been a sizable outcry from gamers who feel that the Greens crossed a line by making, and charging for, a game about their son's battle with cancer. There seem to be just as many people who don't have a problem with the game at all, some even finding it therapeutic. Morals vary from person to person, and deal with concepts and feelings that aren't exactly tangible. Giving a concrete answer to such a personal question is difficult at best, and it's compounded by the fact that we haven't really seen a situation like this in gaming before. We've had films about cancer, we've had games about true events, but I can't think of a single game that has an origin story even remotely like that Dragon Cancer. With no answer readily available, the only thing left to do is ask more questions. There may not be a direct precedent, but we can look at somewhat similar situations to help contextualize and understand how we feel now. First, let's take the argument that making a game about a child dying of cancer crosses a line. It's definitely an extreme situation, but how many times have we told stories of people in extreme situations? The Bucket List and 50-50 are both comedies where the protagonist has cancer, while A Walk to Remember and The Fault in Our Stars make it seem a little romantic. Now, the only movie I could find where a child was afflicted is The Adventures of the Cactus Kid. His name is the Cactus Kid. And he's my sidekick, Billy. This is a joke. Did anyone say you could talk? It seems like a romp. So, are these movies morally sound? 
Most of them are held in very high regard, and they get praise for tackling such a difficult subject. And when video games tackle other serious topics like actual sunlight or papers please, they tend to get a lot of praise without this kind of controversy. Maybe the difference is that these stories are mostly fictional. That Dragon Cancer is wholly based on real-life experience, and it doesn't really shy away from that fact. So, is it morally questionable to make art based on a real tragedy? Well, the general consensus seems to be no. Many times a book, film, or play gets attention and praise because it's based on real life. How many times has the Holocaust or slavery been portrayed in horrific detail? And unlike the creators of most of these movies and plays, the Greens are very personally attached to the subject matter here. It's very likely that many people are put off because Joel is so young, and I understand how hard it is to see horrible things happen to a child. Films like The Boy in the Striped Pajamas are some of the most depressing experiences I've ever had. But does that personal discomfort translate into moral indecency on the part of the filmmakers? There are also those who take issue with that dragon cancer as a product. Many say that there wouldn't be an issue if it was released for free, or if 100% of the sales went to charity. While the Ouya sales, which is basically an oxymoron, are going to charity, the developers have been quiet about where the money from the sales on Steam go, which has been interpreted as an admission of guilt for profiting off of the game. Is it wrong for the Greens to be making money from a game about their son? It's a loaded question, and probably the hardest to answer. Personally, this felt nothing like a cash grab to me. It felt like a very honest look into one of the most painful situations imaginable. I understand why some people don't want to pay for that kind of experience, but I also understand how hard it must have been for the developers to make. Ryan Green is a game developer. This is what he does for a living, and he spent countless hours making a game that is, among other things, a product. And when I think of all the war games that have made huge profits off of casual, light-hearted representations of conflicts that destroyed thousands of lives, I have a hard time crucifying a couple trying to pay tribute to their son with their work. That's my answer, but don't just take it as gospel. Are there lines that shouldn't be crossed when it comes to subject matter in games? Is it wrong to sell a product based off of a tragedy? It's important that we ask ourselves these things. It's how we grow as people and make this world a little less awful. You're entirely within your right to get upset about a subject like this. All I ask is that you think it through and consider all the angles before you make your decision. And I'm the boss of you. Hey guys, thank you for watching. Uh, this is the most excited I've been about making a video in a long time. Uh, that Dragon Cancer was a pretty great experience. I think it's an incredibly important game. I think it's something that uh, we should all at least be aware of. I would watch a playthrough if, uh, if you're interested. Uh, I might upload mine. I did record it, but it had some weird uh, video recording things because my laptop is pretty close to potato status by this point. Let me know what you think below. I'm always interested in having a discussion, especially about something like this. I, I love debates. If this at all seems intriguing to you, please go and check out That Dragon Cancer. And uh, just listen to some of the podcasts and interviews and just all sorts of things. It's been a really, really interesting uh, topic to learn about. Alright, take care, guys.